Have you ever wondered how game developers create insane destruction in their video games? Well, here's how it works. Picture a game where you're about to blow up a building. The game actually has two versions of that building ready to go. One that's all nice, tidy, and pristine, and another that's been broken into smaller bits. Now, when the boom happens, the game quickly swaps the undamaged building with the broken version. Then it uses the direction and power of your explosion to decide how to throw the building pieces around using something called rigid body physics. At the same time, the game triggers special effects for things like dust and fire. This makes sure everything moves somewhat like it would in real life. And there you go, you've got a realistic building explosion right there on your screen. Now, if that's all you wanted to know about building destruction, you can click off the video now and enjoy the rest of your day. But this rabbit hole goes way deeper. So let's talk about Control has some of the best destruction in any video game, bar none. And that's because they've put a lot of time and effort on the procedural destruction system in the game. But what does procedural destruction mean? Just like in reality, this wall isn't a singular monolithic structure. It's comprised of smaller elements, each with properties like weight, strength, and a defined behavior when subjected to destructive forces. When your character sends an explosive shockwave toward this wall, the game doesn't just react arbitrarily. Instead, Control's engine examines the magnitude and direction of your blast. Then it determines how that force would realistically impact the structure, breaking glass into countless shards, splitting wood based on its grain, or chipping away at stubborn concrete. This kind of nuanced destruction isn't just aesthetically pleasing. It means every destructive act in Control is distinct and unique. Suppose they want to change how large the debris is. In that case, they can do so immediately without the time-consuming need to create new pre-rendered animations. Pretty powerful stuff. This flexibility means the developers can iterate rapidly, experimenting with various parameters until the destruction feels just right. But that's not all. We can push procedural destruction even further. Games like Red Faction Guerrilla, Teardown, and The Finals offer a deeper layer to their in-game destruction by introducing something you might not expect a sense of architecture. Let me explain. Each building or structure in these games isn't just an aesthetic object. It's a highly detailed virtual construct mirroring real world architecture. This means that each component, like walls, pillars, or floors, has been assigned certain properties, such as strength and load bearing capacity. When you knock out a support column, the game isn't simply triggering a canned destruction sequence. It's dynamically calculating the stress on the remaining structure, checking how the load redistributes, and then determining how and where the building will collapse all in real time. Now, this may sound amazing, but procedural destruction isn't perfect. It's very heavy on resources and can take a lot of time to set up and get working properly, meaning this isn't an ideal solution for all game studios. So how the f*** did the developers of Battlefield do this? In video game development, the term baking refers to the process of pre-calculating complex computations and storing the results for later use. When applied to destruction sequences, developers calculate the physics of a building's collapse in advance, including how it breaks apart, the trajectory of each fragment, and where each pieces end up. This calculated sequence is stored as an animation. In games like Battlefield, developers can bake the destruction animations for large structures. These baked animations contain all the details of the building's collapse from the initial explosion to the cloud of dust that eventually settles. When an event in the game triggers the destruction, for example, a player placing a C4 charge on a building, the game swaps the intact model of the building with a pre-baked destruction animation. The transition happens almost instantaneously, making it appear as if the building is collapsing in real time, when in fact the sequence was predetermined. Using baked animations for destruction has some pretty clear benefits. It reduces the computational load on the game engine during gameplay, as the physics of the collapse doesn't need to be calculated in real time. This leads to smoother performance and allows for impressive, large-scale destruction without a significant impact on frame rates. However, while baking allows developers to control the spectacle of destruction, it lacks the dynamic variability seen in games that use real-time, physics-based destruction, like Control. 